Today we're going to compare the Silky Big Boy 2000 Extra Large Teeth to the Silky Katana Boy 500. These are large folding saws from Silky and they are really incredible tools. Uh, they're pretty dissimilar so this isn't, uh, this isn't a video where I'm going to say, oh well I think you ought to buy this one or I think you ought to buy that one. Uh, we're, we're just going to compare these today and then a little bit later we're going to go out in the shop and I've got a, I've got a log that's about nine inches in diameter. We're going to, we're going to cut a couple slices off of that to show you their capability and, and maybe give you some idea of, of the performance difference, which isn't so much, you know, uh, tooth design or anything of that nature. It, it's quite simply uh, the size and the tooth depth, the, the performance difference between these two. So we're going to go over the speci specifications and details, um, try to get you a pretty good look at these, even though I'm kind of challenged. Uh, uh, this Katana Boy is so big I can't find a way to keep it in frame on my camera at this distance. And, um, you know, uh, of course, some of you folks have watched some of my other saw videos. I am a little bit camera challenged, and our lighting, um, I'm looking for ways to improve it. But I think I'll do my best here at least to give you a good look at these, and we'll just talk about them for a minute. Okay, the Katana Boy 500, this saw weighs two full pounds. In fact, my scale says it's two pounds in an ounce. I paid $107 for this very recently. I imported it directly from Japan from a company that, uh, from an exporter who sells on Amazon. Uh, this saw normally, when you find these, they're about 180 bucks. Uh, the suggested retail on them is around 245. These are expensive, very high quality tools. That's just how it is. These are spendy. This is a lot of money if you want to get into one of these. It's over a hundred dollars and it's pushing two hundred dollars normally. So that, that's, just, that's just how it is. You gotta want one pretty bad to buy one. Let's see. So this is a two pound saw. I paid about hundred and seven dollars for it. This has seventy nine and a half teeth on 19 inches of cutting surface, but this is a 21 inch blade. From the pivot out to the tip, you're looking at 21 inches. Uh, there are teeth on almost exactly 19 inches of that blade. Uh, these teeth are four points per inch. I, I said there's 79 and a half of them. The half a tooth is the safety tip is sharpened back toward the user. Um, these are sharpenable. This is unique for silky folding saws. Uh, they advertise these as impulse hardened and generally speaking impulse hardened means you can't, you can't sharpen it. This blade is on silky sharpenable list and they do sell a special file for sharpening their, their teeth, there's teeth on their saw blades. So you can sharpen this one. Uh, replacement blades are pushing 80 bucks. I think the company that sold me this saw currently has some listed around 55, 56, 57 dollars. Uh, but that's still, it's a lot of money for a replacement blade, so it's pretty nice that you can indeed resharpen this blade. Uh, let's see, these are non-set teeth. Each tip of the, each tip of each tooth is right behind the tooth ahead of it. The teeth haven't been spread apart. They are not set. Uh, the blade is two millimeters thick at the teeth and 1.75 millimeters thick at the spine. They grind these blades that way. They aren't pressed. They aren't, you know, they, they don't make the kerf wider than the back of the blade by setting the teeth. They actually grind their blades thinner at the spine than at the teeth for, uh, to keep them from binding up, to reduce the amount of friction on the side of the blade as you cut through material. Um, the teeth, the teeth themselves, and let's try to get you a good look at these teeth if I possibly can. You have to excuse me if I get out of frame here too much, but these teeth 
Try to get a good focus there. These teeth are about a half an inch deep. They're, they're pretty close to a half an inch deep. They are serious, serious, nasty teeth. Maybe I can get a better angle here and get a better view. They are right about a half an inch deep. I'm getting a little blurry there, sorry. Okay, I think that's the best look I can, I can give you at that saw. Um, again, it doesn't fit in my frame if I leave it all opened up, so we'll halfway fold that. Um, this saw is unique of a silky folding saw in the fact that it not only locks open, but it locks shut. This is a single position open lock. There's a notch here in the blade. Uh, just one, so it's a single position handle, it's a straight blade, uh, this, this little knob is a safety feature that locks the, 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 the rocker bar that contains the pin that drops into these notches on the blade to lock the blade. This is just a safety feature, this really has nothing to do with the operation of the saw. This is just to uh, uh, an additional keep you from hurting yourself sort of thing. This is not absolutely necessary. Uh, I've seen people in the forums mention this being a plastic head on this that they're worried that it could somehow break and keep them from being able to use their saw. That's just, uh, it, it's not that way. This is just an extra safety feature. This blade is locked open right now. Um, you know, this just keeps us from accidentally disengaging the lock bar. So, also unique for this, for, for a silky saw, is the fact that this blade locks closed. Uh, none of the other silky folding saws have, have this other notch. This one right here, I hope you can see where my finger's at. Uh, that is to let the lock bar drop in there close this saw so it's locked shut and then extra added safety you can spin this down and then the, the rocking lock mechanism can't operate. Uh, this saw comes with oops boy that was loud this saw comes with this nylon bag uh, in a previous video I was a little bit critical of it I've had some time with it now uh, it's not as bad as I said, you know, I, I thought it was kind of cheap. It's really not. It's, it's pretty good, uh, you know, it's not Cordura nylon, but this is a, this is a pretty thick, kind of a nice uh, ripstop sort of nylon. Um, then it's rubber backed on the inside, so it's, uh, you know, it, it's pretty thick stuff and a little bit padded. I kind of like it. Inside here is a slot for a uh, spare blade. Um, and then there is a carry strap that's, you know, a half inch webbing stitched to the bottom, run through a D-ring at the top. So that even gives you some, uh, you know, maybe some method to, uh, maybe some method to uh, tie this to the outside of your pack or wrap this around something. Uh, this is a nice thing to have. I kind of misspoke. Um, because I'm on camera, there's the slot for the for the uh, spare blade. It's actually on the outside, not on the inside. So that's that's kind of nice. It, it comes with a carry bag, um, and it isn't. You know, I was a little critical of it in the previous video. It, it's actually pretty nice. Uh, you know, it's not bomb proof, but it's nicer than I indicated in that last video. Now that I've spent some time with it, I like it a little better than I did. 
Okay, moving on to the Silky Big Boy 2000. And since we're, we're here, this saw does not come with this sheath. I, this was an extra purchase I made at Cheryl Tree. I don't remember what I spent. It was probably 20 bucks or something. Um, I don't know. I don't know how necessary it is. I, uh, it's actually a, uh, it's actually a, uh, you know, like a knife sheath. This is meant to go on your belt. This is some fake leather kind of nonsense here. It's got a, uh, you know, compression snap. Um, I don't know. The material is some sort of an ABS plastic. I have used this. I have put this on my belt, but this was an extra purchase. Um, you know, you can get something to protect this saw if you want something to protect this saw, and this was made for it. It even has the logo right on it. Silky makes this, but they don't send it to you with that saw. Okay, specifications and details. Um, this saw weighs 14.5 ounces. I think that that makes it a very reasonable size pack saw, at least for how much weight a person might want to carry in their backpack. Uh, that, that's pretty light. I paid $40 for this specific example on the table. Uh, my previous, uh, I still have it, uh, but I, I have two of these big boys. Uh, the, the one I bought a few years ago cost me 80 or 90 bucks. It was expensive. Uh, in recent times, these are a lot easier to get a hold of in America. There are a lot of people selling them on eBay, Amazon, uh, other places on the web. So I think with more competition, the price has come down, you know. So I paid 40 for this one. Right now on Amazon, I'm seeing them around 46 47 48 dollars. So I think you can still get one for less than 50 bucks. Uh, don't expect to pay 40 anymore, however. Uh, like I said, they usually sell between 40 and 80. The suggested retail price on this, I think, is 85 dollars. Replacement blades are available and in different tooth sizes than this extra large. Uh, the company that I bought this saw from lists not just a blade for that, but also a blade for this. Uh, and the price of this one is somewhere around $32. So I don't know how worth it it is when you can get the whole saw for $45 or so. Uh, but they, they are available, and they are available in other tooth sizes. And there are reasons to have other tooth sizes, but we're going to talk about silky blades in a future video. I've got a plan for talking about all the different blades that I've got and what they're useful for. So we're not talking about that today. Uh, this blade has 74 teeth. Actually, 74 and a half teeth, just like you know, this other one, the, the safety tip is sharpened toward the user. Uh, the blade is 14 and 3 quarters of an inch long and it has just such a, a tiny little hair under 14 inches of cutting surface. It is 5.5 points per inch and these are also 3D cut um, impulse hardened nasty sharp teeth. They're about three eighths of an inch deep. Try to get you a good look at this saw now. Okay, let's see. Where did we leave off? 5.5 points per inch, 3 eighths of an inch deep on the teeth. These are not sharpenable, but they are also not set. The teeth are in line with the tooth in front of them, so that you know increases the speed. This is also a taper, a taper ground blade. Um, I believe it is 1.5 millimeters at the teeth and 1.4 at the spine. So it is considerably thinner metal than the blade on the katana boy. Uh, it is, you know, it's half a millimeter thinner. Or yeah, is that right? Yeah, 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 half a millimeter thinner. That's exactly right. Um, closed up. 
This is 16 inches long, just like that, 16 inches to pack. Uh, it's, I think I've said in a previous video, it's about an inch and a quarter thick. Um, no, this is almost exactly an inch thick at the widest point. So it's actually pretty small to pack. And 14.5 ounces, it's under a pound to carry with you. Uh, open length is 29 and three quarters of an inch. Oops, I put it in the second position. We haven't talked about that yet. 29 and three quarters of an inch long, total open length. And then let's go ahead and get into this is also this is a little different than the katana boy. It has a second position on the lock. Some people say that this is good for um, when you're cutting down low, uh, when you're cutting something low that it keeps your knuckles out of the ground. I personally do not saw dirt with my silky saws. They're too expensive to replace the blades. If I can't get it up out of the dirt, I will use a lever and a fulcrum to do so. Uh, that's, uh, I don't cut material that is right in the dirt. Even when I am clearing trail, I just make it a rule not to trash my blades like that because they are expensive. Uh, this has the same kind of lock, rocker bar, you know, it's a, like a teeter-totter here, spring-loaded. There's a metal pin that drops into these notches. First position and second position. This does not lock shut, relies on friction to keep it closed, and it's not going anywhere. So it's not just going to fly open in your pack. I don't mind it being friction closed. I would maybe prefer if they figured out a way to lock these shut, but I don't mind it. it, it I've never had one open in my pack, so it's not a big deal. Uh, a much smaller saw than this one. These are both uh, very high quality tools. We have covered the specifications in details. And again, this isn't, uh, I like this one better than that one, or you ought to buy this one and don't buy that one. This isn't that kind of a video. This is just a comparison so you can see them side by side, get an idea of what they are capable of and maybe what they are not. Um, in a previous video, I've said that I would tap it up to a 15 inch diameter piece of wood with the Katana Boy. That remains true. In a previous video, I said that I'd be happy going 9 or 10 inches with this saw. Uh, the log that I have out in the shop right now was actually separated from the ground with this saw. It was quite a bit of work. It's pretty hard stuff and it's a little over 9 inches in diameter. So, yeah, that also remains true, that I would tackle a 9 or 10 inch log with, uh, with this saw when necessary. So let's go out in the shop and let's just do that. Let's go cut a few slices off of that, uh, off of that piece of wood I have and we will just end the video there. Okay, that is... Nine inches, almost in every direction. Eight and three quarters on this little kind of a flat side. Nine and a quarter, nine inches. So, nine inches. That's that's a pretty big piece of wood. So let's uh, let's give it a couple of cuts. Should have opened this saw before I turned the camera on for the interest of trying to keep this a shorter video than most of my saw videos. Let's uh, take a chunk off of this.
took just a little bit of effort. Let me uh, get behind the camera here. Probably hear me puffing and huffing here. I, yep, took a little bit of effort. But uh, that's a really big, thick, heavy, dense piece of wood. That's, uh, you know, it had a nice smooth cut. I'm going to reset this about an inch here. So I'm going to shut the camera off for a second so we don't waste too much time. Hang on. Here we go. Let's get a cut on this one with the Silky Big Boy 2000 Extra Large Teeth. And then we'll wrap this up. <laughs> I can get these both in frame here. Give you an idea of the size difference when they're all opened up. I think you just saw that, you know, a larger saw, of course, cuts through it with a little less effort. Um, I'm often guilty of not letting the saw do the work, uh, but I took it pretty easy today. So even taking it really easy on them, boy, man alive, that's, uh, Pretty big piece of material and both of them were fully capable of getting through it in a pretty big hurry. Um, let's take a new measurement here before we finish this video. Wow, nine inches, uh, still a little over eight and a half, eight and three quarter, nine Yep, nine inch piece of very dense, very hard, very dry wood. Um, I'll mention here, both of those uh, tooth designs are really a little bit more appropriate for greener wood and pine, um, softer stuff, but they do pretty well in hard wood. Uh, this isn't the hardest stuff in the world by any means, but... Uh, they do pretty well in cherry. They do pretty well in, well, every material I've, I've tried them in. They're, they're exceptional, very fast saws. Okay, thanks for taking the time to listen to me for a while about the statistics and details about those saws and show you how they perform a little bit. And uh, I, I hope that this information helps you a little bit if you are in the market for a device like that. Um, really, they're, they're spectacular tools. You can't go wrong with either one of them. Uh, the Katana Boy, of course, is expensive. I don't expect you to find it at the price I found it at. Uh, the Big Boy, I think for a while yet, if you buy one of those, you'll, you'll find them under 50 bucks for a while yet. Uh, other than the price consideration and how much weight and length you can carry with you, um, they're both spectacular performers and very high quality tools. Thanks for taking the time to listen to me for a while. I hope the rest of your day goes really, really well.